war in Russia enters its third year, with Soviet armies pounding the Nazis from the Black Sea to the Baltic. Taking town after town, Soviet forces find a ravaged country left by the Nazis. But Hitler paid a price for this wanton destruction. That price was more than five million Nazi soldiers. Fighting with new power, Russia's Black Sea Fleet is seen here in action against Nazi supply ships. From Sevastopol come enemy bombers to the attack, and the fleet throws up a barrage of anti-aircraft fire. In the engagement, a ship is set ablaze. Dramatic action films of Soviet sailors fighting the flames and saving their ship. Wounded, but like his ship, still in the fight. Now patrol planes sight a Nazi submarine, and depth charges shake the sea. enemy raider that will never raid again. Canada orders increased production of coal to speed the war effort. Soldiers who are experienced miners volunteer to help the home front. Coal furloughs, special leaves of absence, are granted for three months to permit the men to do the work they know best. Typical of these soldier miners is Private McDonald. Changing from army khaki to the blue overalls of the mines, Private McDonald is one of but many volunteers returning to serve where he is most needed. tunnels five miles out beneath the Atlantic Ocean, Private McDonald goes to work with pickaxe and drill. Here, miners work in the world's largest undersea mines. Imagine mining coal under the ocean five miles from shore. Trains bring out more than 12 million tons a year. Coal carried direct to ships waiting at the docks. Coal to make coke for the blast furnaces that smelt iron ore. to make steel, the crucible of modern war. Canada, fourth largest producer of war products for the United Nations, is doing a magnificent job. Far out in the hills of India and Burma, native carriers and their pack elephants are helping American forces in the tremendous task of bringing food, munitions, and medicine to distant army outposts. To reach the more inaccessible garrisons, faster methods of transport are used. Packing supplies in canvas bundles, they're loaded aboard huge cargo planes to be delivered by parachute. Plane sighted, the mountain forces spread a white marker on the ground to guide the pilot. A signal fire to help show in the field. And here come the bundles, floating down by parachute. 
Traveling overland, the trip would take days. Now they reach men with supplies in a matter of hours. Another spectacular wartime achievement for air transport. Australian division, rugged, sunburned veterans of the North African campaign, receives a triumphant welcome home. After months of fierce desert warfare, they've been replaced by fresh troops from Britain and the United States. Australian nurses who were with the 8th Army march with the men. These soldiers have seen service and they're glad to be home. America brings relief in the wake of war. Refugees from Europe are first to be aided by the new United States Office of Foreign Relief and Rehabilitation, now established in North Africa. Although in fairly good physical condition, most of the men are in tatters, their feet in rags, in makeshift sandals, or wearing nothing at all. This United States Army truck bringing food, medicine, clothing, and even bedding is the most welcome sight they've seen in three long years. Each man is given two pairs of socks, a suit of underwear, shirts, and most needed of all, shoes. The Germans and Italians having long since stripped North Africa of leather, shoes have been unknown. United States civilian officials are in charge of the distribution. First scenes of human reconstruction that must follow in the wake of war. America and the other United Nations are doing their utmost to repair the damage that has been done. liberators of the United States Army Air Force bound for Ley, an important Japanese naval and air base on the island of New Guinea in the South Pacific. Over the target, they send 36 tons of high explosives and incendiary bombs plunging earthward. Japanese airfields and installations smashed, the raiders prepare the way for the capture by land forces of strategic island bases in this area. Now, flying high across picturesque northern New Zealand, Dominion airmen in American-built fighter planes patrol the skyways on the lookout for Japs. Miles away, over New Zealand's famous Southern Alps, Bombers cruise against a backdrop of snow-capped glaciers and towering mountain peaks. Allied air power constantly increasing in the South Pacific. 